So let me introduce myself a little bit. So um, I did my master and PhD degree at MIT with uh, Professor John Hansman, who is primarily research in aviation. And then I was in San Francisco for one year doing consulting, uh, mostly uh, focused on operations research. And then after one year, I joined my husband in Hong Kong. So I start from uh, 2014. Uh, I uh, uh, basically worked in the re uh, primarily focused on the research um, related to anything related to data science and uh, Aviation, but uh, there's not much aviation going on in Hong Kong except airlines. Okay, <laughs> I also focused on some other things related to uh, intelligent transportation systems. Um, so it's a great opportunity for me to uh, be here today. So thank you very much for inviting me. Um, and then um, for my research, I'm gonna start with this one. Okay, so I I did research on um, flight data recorder. Uh, analysis since I was at MIT. Um, and so it's back to, so basically Najuk did an introduction like a top-down approach, many things related to safety research, and then this is more like one of the approach that you can do uh, for that goal. Um, so basically everyone is aware of this, the black box was designed basically for um, uh, look back, look back in the history, what happened in the past. What we can do now because of the technology advancement and data collection, data storage, everything has been increased uh, uh, in, uh, hugely. So what we can do now is a more like a routine and proactive monitoring of this data now. Uh, we have a lot of this data and it's readily available. Uh, normally what we use is actually from that uh, red in the color black, black box, okay? Quick access recorder, but that's not really the black box. The black box is this orange one. Okay, so normally we use that data from quick access recorder from airlines. Um, it's very easy to download uh, the data from that thing. Um, I'll just do this very quickly. Probably most of you guys are aware of this already. Current approach has been used at airlines is basically based on this one, accident detection or accident analysis. It's basically you have defined a list of events that you believe is unsafe. Uh, to, to detect those events, you have to specify what parameters you want to detect, you want to monitor, and then what is the threshold you want to monitor, you want to set, okay? For, so for each different type of aircraft, and then for even uh, each airline, they can adjust those parameters according to their own needs. Uh, so this method is very accurate and is effective. Um, the only downside for this is you cannot really respond to any emerging uh, risks. Anything that you were not aware, then you were, it's not in the list, so you cannot detect it. Uh, so our approach is this cluster-based flight data analysis approach, cluster AD approach. Um, it's very similar to MCAT, which was developed at uh, NASA Ames. Uh, we actually did uh, collaborative research in the past to compare the algorithm's performance, MCAT performance and cluster AD's performance. I'll talk about that later, okay? Uh, so, but basically, the cluster AD's approach, um, main idea is you can transform, you can transform the flight data into some kind of uh, uh, hyperspace so that all the data, okay, will be in this hyperspace because the, um, the operations at airlines are so standardized now, so the assumption is most of the flights, they will naturally cluster into groups, okay, for most of the flights. And then you have a few flights kind of stand out, okay. Um, so for this method, we can just use the data based on the data itself, identify those clusters and also the abnormal flights. Um, so, originally we designed this method just to identify those abnormal flights. Some of those could be safe ones, uh, could be spit, spit, uh, sorry, safe ones, so they are like a false alarm. But most, uh, a lot of them could be um, the event yeah, you're really interested in, could be those uh, watch cases as well. Okay. okay. But later, what we find out, um, one of the benefits of this cluster based approach is we can identify those clusters as well. So we can actually monitor the normal operations as well. So for normal operations, you can have several different clusters um, depending on which airport you depart from, or what kind of operations you were doing. So one of the benefits of this cluster-based approach is you can identify common patterns of flight operations and then just uh, actively monitoring for most of the flights happening at this particular airline. Is it going well? Is it going as you expect it or not? I'll show you an example later. 
Um, but this is the core concept of cluster AB. So basically, this is the raw flight data, time series data. And then we can do a kind of transformation to a vector into a hyperspace. There are different ways to do this kind of transformation. Okay. Um, we published uh, so far two papers uh, based on similar idea, but different ways to do the transformation. Uh, depending on how do you do the transformation, then the kind of clusters you identify could be different. And the meaning, uh, the operational meaning of those clusters could be different. Um, for this basic version of cluster AD, what we did is very simple. Just uh, kind of uh, uh, do fixed time interval samples for each parameter and then add them up together into a very long vector for each flight. And then we put that vector in a hyperspace and then just use one of the typical uh, clustering algorithm called DB scan to do the off-flight detection and also cluster detection. Um, yeah. And then this is the result, okay, one of the examples. Uh, what we can identify are clusters. This one shows you the clusters. So this is one of the uh, proof of concept study we did with uh, airline based in Hong Kong. Um, this is for all the takeoffs uh, uh, for a particular air, I think it's for Boeing 777, it's okay to say that. <laughs> I need to be careful what I can do, what I cannot say. Uh, for the Boeing 777 takeoffs at Hong Kong. Um, as you can see here, okay, um, these are the timeline, okay, we, we do the, the analysis starting from when you, um, when you start the rollout. Start the row on the on the wrong way, and then this is for different parameters: height above uh, takeoff, airspeed, pitch, uh, this is the engine and one right engine, flap angle and gross weight. Uh, what you can see here, naturally, the we identified three clusters from this group of data, and then we go to the airline, talk to them. Are those three clusters make sense to you? They said yes, it does, because those cl three clusters basically represent. Uh, very typical, like a uh, uh, short haul flight um, for, for basically local flight, okay? And then long haul and usual long haul flights, okay? based on gross weight and also the operation. So, I, okay, great. So, it, the cluster actually does make sense. And then the next step, what we do is um, we can also just focus on those outliers to identify from this approach. Like for example, this is one of the outlier flights we identified. Um, this is the red line, okay? The red line represents for that uh, outlier flight. What we found was for this particular flight, it's actually uh, one of the short haul flights, okay? The weight is light. But look at the engine power, okay? For short haul flight, it's supposed to use this engine setting, this green one. I think it should belong to this green, green cluster. But what happened was it was using full power, very high power setting for takeoff. Uh, so what happened was the attitude uh, uh, accelerated very fast, airspeed as well, and also the, the actual takeoff happens much earlier than the other flights. Uh, and then there's some unstabilized thing happening to the roll attitude as well. Uh, so this could be a risky event. They need to take further action to look what happened exactly and why it happened. Okay. Um, so this is one of the example. Um, uh, once we so this those kind of work well, already I did it basically inside the university. Okay, I, I basically have the idea, read all the paper, and then do it and test it out with the data uh, that I have. But later, once I started work with airlines, what we found really powerful for this cluster-based approach is you can focus on those normal operations. There's all kinds of things you can do with those normal operations identification. For example, here you can do inter-airline comparison. Um, on the top row, it's from one airline. On the uh, bottom row, it's from another airline. The same type of aircraft. But a little bit different is this one was all in all the data from one particular takeoff uh, from one particular airport. But this one's from multiple airports. But supposedly the operation should be very uh, similar to each other. Uh, what we thought was interesting is on the pitch performance, okay? Uh, the shape of this cluster are very different. Okay, so we actually talked to airline A. Why the shape of this blue, especially the majority of the cluster, blue cluster? have this kind of double peaks here, okay? 
Uh, so we talked to them. We actually find out there was some kind of problem with the pilot training for the data. So they have a little bit of uh, double, what is the professional word? Um, double double row or double uh, double pitch <coughs> problem. Um, so they review their um, pilot training procedure and then correct it. Um, now I think it's it's time for me to go back check check the data see if it improved or not. Um, but that's basically something we did about two years ago. Um, so um, it's just something useful that we find out after we actually work with airlines. Um, yeah, so this is basically what I want to say. Uh, use, big da use big data actually in monitoring normal operation rather than just focus on anomalies. Um, then you can fully use the power of the data. But it does need a shift in paradigm, okay? Um, especially the, uh, for different <laughs> airlines, the, the culture, the, um, whether you want to work together or not, uh, especially for the pilot, could be a sensitive issue. Uh, but it's, it's a good time to look at the normal operations as well as non operations, and this cluster technique is a good way to do this. Um, some future applications that we're working on using a similar approach, one is to focus on fuel efficiency. Um, this is more from the, um, the air traffic management perspective. And so this is actually Hong Kong. This red line depicts the standard approach that it should be, okay, designed by STAR and then also the airline, they should do that. But those green tracks, okay, are the actual tracks from the flight. This is the altitude profile. We can see was uh, when they were doing the landing, they have been uh, brought down much earlier than what they were supposed to. So they were flying very low and then drag drag until they uh, can land. And then for the fuel consumption, a lot of that is over uh, the, what it's designed for. Most of that is much higher than what the procedure was designed for. So the big fuel inefficiency there. Um, it, but so people are aware of that, but without this kind of tool, then you cannot quantify it. So what we were doing is to use this kind of tool to quantify the impact and see what if we do the design better and then we work with the uh, uh, controller to, uh, to change. So most of this kind of uh, drop down is actually because of the controller after the pilot did this. Uh, so we can work say, with the controller to do some behavior change. Uh, another thing we can work on in the future is this one just started is for pilot performance assessment. This is more focused on the normal operation. Um, right now, most of the pilot performance is assessed by human. Okay? You have a rater sitting there to see how they perform. What we're we proposing to do is we can use this cluster-based approach to identify where does most people do, okay? and then compare to most of the people where you are, and then give a score or something. Okay? Maybe it's not like one single score, but some kind of indicator that we can do um, to, to better quantify the pilot proficiency via flight data. Uh, all right. Um, so that's basically everything I did related to your flight safety. Okay. Now I want to spend a little bit more mi minutes on other projects with uh, data analytics to aviation challenges. Okay. One of them is on the more national scale air traffic management. Um, as I come from uh, Hong Kong, China. Okay. Uh, so I know there was severe flight delay problem, particularly to China. So I want to know why. People always say it's an airspace problem, but why? Okay, exactly where does the, air, the airspace problem come from? So what I did was just using open data, okay? The flight radar 24 flight tracks data that we can collect everywhere. And then just to draw it out and then do network analysis to figure out compared to the US, how does this air traffic network uh, compare to US? Okay, so what we found out, yeah, exactly. In the US, most of that is free flight, you can fly direct routes. But for China, it's more like all the flights are operating more like trains. Okay? They have to fly along the tracks that they designed for. So um, this airspace problem. Another thing we did was <coughs> planning for airlines. Um, I think some of the, well, a lot of the airlines have similar problem. On the bottom, okay, the blue line, okay, is the, is the actual fuel consumption for one particular OD pair. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> I hope you can hear me in the past. <laughs> but anyway, okay, I finished most of it already. Uh, there's only a few flights. Sometimes you have very few, uh, very, very high fuel consumption. And then in order to deal with that kind of uncertainty, for most of the flights, you have to add up a lot of fuel 
in order to deal with those kind of unexpected peaks in fuel consumption. Um, what AI can do is we want to bring down the, the load fuel, the unnecessary fuel loaded on each flight for the majority of the flight if we can predict these peaks much better. Okay, so that's another project we are working on. Um, and then this is less related to traditional aviation. It's more about the um, UAS, the um, unmanned aerial system in the city. So we're actually working with one of the company in China. They have this kind of UAV delivering packages in operation already. What we're doing is we think the real challenge comes from scale. Okay. Uh, if you do uh, a few deliveries, it's fine. But if you do want to scale it up in the city, in the urban environment, very high density airspace, then you have a scale problem. <coughs> So what we do is how do we design the airspace structure, airspace um, management kind of framework better in order to make this a reality, okay? So uh, my time is up, so that's it for my presentation. Thank you very much, and I look forward to your ideas or uh, comments to me. Thank you.